Hey, howdy, hey. Thank you guys for tuning in. We're on chapter three of Hank the Cow Dog. And this is the book by John R. Erickson. So I'm going to read a little bit of our previous chapter and break right into the new chapter. Okay. Ooh. As we remember last time, Hank the Cow Dog was in Sally Mae's backyard and he got in trouble. He got in trouble because he ate the birthday cake. Now, in his opinion, he had just been sharing with little Alfred. It was little Alfred's birthday. But when Sally Mae came back, all she saw was the half-eaten cake and Hank sticking his head into it. So this is her reaction. Alfred! What on earth? Hank! Huh? Our heads came up. I looked at little Alfred and he looked at me. He giggled. I didn't. If I had anywhere near as much cake on my face as he did, fellers, I was in trouble. It's hard to deny the crime when you're wearing the evidence right on your face. Ooh. Sally Mae's face started to turn red. She grabbed a rake and started running towards us in what you might call angry walks, long, sharp steps. At a glance, I could see that this was going to be another misunderstanding between me and Sally Mae. She didn't understand about the giant rattlesnake, or me protecting her baby, or the wonderful relationship me and little Alfred had just built up. She probably thought I was in her backyard eating her cake, and she might have suspected me of also flattening her Irish beds going after that rattlesnake. I hated to walk out on little Alfred, but I had a pretty good idea which one of us was going to get the rake thrown at him. You've ruined my cake, you, you, you hound! Get out of this yard and out of my flowers! Just as I suspected, I tucked my tail and started to slink away. When she threw that rake at me, I slank no more. I ran. I'd solved the case of the missing giant rattlesnake. You might even say it had been a piece of cake. But consider the price of success. My reputation was in shambles. Chapter 3. On the Road Again. Before I could get out of her yard, Sally Mae threw a hand trowel. If you guys ever seen a hand trowel before, it's kind of like a little tiny shovel that you used to do, do in the garden. But before I could even get out of her yard, Sally Mae threw a hand trowel and little Alfred's toy truck at me. She missed with both, but not by much. That truck would have hurt if it hit. I vaulted the fence. That means he jumped over it. Right over the top of Drover. I could see his eyes. They were as big as two fried eggs in a skillet. I ran down the hill past the gas tanks and didn't slow down until I got to the sewer. By that time, Drover had caught up with me. Hank, what happened? Did you catch the snake? Oh, oh my, oh my gosh, what's that all over your face? I studied the runt for a minute. One of these days, I'm going to get tired of you sending me on suicide missions. What do you mean? I mean, there wasn't a snake in that flower bed. It was a cat. Do you know the difference between a cat and a snake? No. What? He gave me a vacant stare of his. Just as I suspected. You saw Pete in this iris bed, and somehow that little pea brain of yours up in that noggin made me, made him think it, made him into a giant rattlesnake and told me about it. No. It was a rattlesnake. A huge one. And he was crawling right towards the baby. I know it was, Hank. All right. Let's check that out. How many legs? How many legs did your rattlesnake have? Drover rolled his eyes. Well, not that many. How many years? Well, I didn't count them, Hank. By any chance, did you hear the snake say, meow, or mew? Nah, he didn't say a word. Was there anything on the end of his tail? 
end of his tail. Well, if he was a rattlesnake, he must have had a rattle. But did you see it? You think so? Uh-huh. But did you see it? If it was there, I saw it. You're being slippery, Drover. Uh, but I'm not easily fooled. Now, once again, was it there? What's your answer? Can you give me a hint? Either yes or no. Did you see a rattle on the end of his tail or not? It's very simple. He thought for a long time before answering. E yes. Are you sure about that? No. But you didn't say that I had to be sure. I sighed and shook my head. Drover, you're the only dog in the security business whose testimony could be used by both sides at once. Thanks, Hank. That's no compliment. Oh, gosh. I guess we'll never know if what you saw this morning was a snake or a cat or even an elephant. It wasn't an elephant, Hank. I'm pretty sure about that. Are you trying to be funny? Me? No, 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 I'm not. That's too bad. Just for a second there, I had a glimmer of hope. I waded out into the water and looked down at my reflection. My face was covered with cake crumbs and icing from the cake. I resembled a clown, which seemed very appropriate for the situation I just got out of. Drover, I'm a failure. You are? I work 18 hours a day on this place. I try to do the right thing, but it seems that every time I turn around, I'm in trouble again. It's just not worth it. Why, up there in that yard, I could have been killed by that rattlesnake. I thought it was a cat. For what? Why do I go on day after day beating my head against a brick wall? I bet that hurts. There's just no sense to it. Sounds crazy to me. Is it for honor? The glory? The adventure? It's bound to be something. Drover, what do you think about love? Oh, I'm for it. Maybe that's what's wrong with me. I've spent too many years wrapped up in my career and never took the time to fall in love. <sighs> Sometimes a guy can't see the forest for the trees, huh, Drover? Yeah. And most of them are down by the creek anyways. There's a whole world out there that I didn't know about. It's a world of birds and butterflies and flowers. And hay fever. It's a world of sunshine and poetry and songs. Drover, do you think I'm too old to act silly again and fall in love? I don't know, but you look pretty silly with that stuff all over your face. I gazed at myself in the water. Hank the Clown Dog. Head of Ranch Manurity. That's what I get for my years of service. You're right, Drover. It's time for a change. You've convinced me that it's time for me to fall in love. I did that? Yes. By being such an incredible dunce, by sending me on all these missions, by proving over and over that chaos and mismanagement are the natural order of the universe. Gosh, thanks, Hank. Now I shall take my bath and prepare this magnificent doggy for the ladies of the world. And then I'll bid farewell to this ungrateful place and travel down the creek to the next ranch, where dwells my true love. Drover's ears shot up. Hey, that's where my true love lives. I'll go with you. Very well, Drover. We'll go together, and then together we'll embark on a new career. What career is that, Hank? I gave him a smile. We're going to become troubadours, poets, and professional, professional relationship advice artists. Boy, that sounds like fun. Yeah, fun. What a strange word to me, I know. So little much about it, but I'll learn to be frivolous. I glanced up towards the house, and one of these nights, when the moon is dark and the coyotes are slinking through the shadows... They'll regret what they done to me. Yeah, they'll be sorry. What a delicious thought. Loper and Sally Mae, out with the flashlights, calling my name. Hank! 
begging me to come back. Hank, I'm sorry. Promising me a fresh start and a better deal. But too late. I plunged into the warm green water, rolled and splashed and laughed as I kicked my legs up in the air. When I stepped up and shook all the water off, I felt as though I'd washed away the old Hank and become a new dog. Minutes later, me and Drover started off on our new adventure, heading down towards the creek, and as we passed one of those big elm trees there in the flat, I caught a glimpse of Pete the cat. He had seen us, and fearing for his life, he had begun slunking towards a nearby tree. The old Hank would have taken the time to whip him up and run him properly right up to the top of the tree. But the new Hank considered him absolutely irrelevant. Just another bad memory from years of squandered youth. Don't bother to run, cat. I'm finished with you and this ranch. I'm a changed dog. I don't lure myself to chase cats anymore. He reached his claws up on the tree trunk and started sharpening them on the bark. Oh, really? Yeah, really, said Drover. We're not kidding this time. I bet I can make you chase me, said Pete. I laughed. I'm beyond that, Pete. <laughs> it's all behind me now. We're quitting this ranch forever. You can have it. It's yours. Keep it. He studied his claws. I still bet I can make you chase me. We stopped. All right, go ahead. You'll find that I'm a changed dog. Try me. He humped up his back and hissed. <laughs> Nothing, Pete. Sorry. He yowled and spit. I only laughed at him. He flicked the end of his tail back and forth. The feeling's gone, Pete. Oh, buddy, old pal, I'm sorry. Laughing at Pete and the whole ranch, Drover and I started out on our journey. How's your nose doing, Hanky? That was Pete's voice. I stopped. Slowly, I turned my head until I could see him. He was sitting at the base of the tree, flicking and grinning. You shut your lousy, rotten mouth about my nose. Looks like somebody. He reached up and dragged his claws across the tree trunk again. Scratched it. You've been warned, cat. One more word of you and I'm liable to clean up. Hmm? One more word. How about... Nose. That did it. I went after him, and Drover was right behind me, saying, Get him, Hanky! Get him! Get him! I darn near got him, but he managed to escape up to the tree in the last possible second. And let that be a lesson to you, cat, I yelled. Arr! He smiled and flicked his tail. Told you I could make you chase me. You haven't changed so much. That's what you think. We're leaving this ranch, and you'll never see me again. Ah, you'll be back, said Pete. I'll give you three days. All right, and that's the end of chapter three. So we get to see exactly how long, if any, Hank takes out in the wilderness. Sounds like he's planning to truly take off, leave the ranch because he got chased out and he's angry at Sally Mae. We'll get to see the next chapter, chapter four, the horrible quicksand monster on the next, well, on the next stream. Alright, catch you guys later. Hope you enjoy well, the acting. Catch you later. <laughs>